Okay, this is uh, the second FRQ in the fourth unit, um, where you're going to simulate the playing of a game. Uh, the rules are described here. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily helpful to uh, memorize each of these. Uh, we can refer back to it when we get to that part of the algorithm. Um, but essentially, you're playing a game where two players start with uh, this, a number of coins that then have the option of spending one, two, or three. And then based on some rules, they either gain or lose uh, uh, coins um, based on what the other player played. So if we go down here, uh, we have a class which has two instance variables, the number of starting coins and the number of max rounds. So uh, you would be creating a coins game object where you pass as parameters the number of starting coins and the number of rounds, max rounds. Um, then you have a method which gets the number of coins that each player moves. Um, get player move one, uh, one move is not is implemented already for you and the implementation is not shown. Uh, you're going to in part A uh, write this method get player two move and then in part B you're going to simulate a game. Uh, okay so uh, part A is fairly straightforward and part B is much trickier. Um, Part A, you're writing this method, which is going to determine, based on the round, uh, what how many coins player two is going to play. Um, so uh, there are three rules. If the round is divisible by three, then you're going to play three coins and therefore return the number three. If the round is not divisible by three but divisible by two, then we play two coins, and otherwise we're returning or we're playing one coin. Um, okay, so let's write this method. Public int get player to move int round. Okay, so if it's divisible by three, if round mod three is equal to zero, we simply return three. Okay. If uh, it's divisible by two, but not by three, then we're returning two. So if mod round mod two is equal to zero, return two. Um, students often ask why we don't need to put an else statement here, and we, uh, we could put an else statement here. Um, however, it's not necessary because when we, if, if we return, if round mod three is equal to true, and we return three, remember that a return statement ends the method. So if we get to this line of code, we already know that round mod three is equal to zero is false. Because if it's true, we've already returned and the method is over. Um, and so if neither of these things are true, we can simply return one. Okay. And that's, that's all there is to part A. Okay, so uh, part B is a little trickier. We're going to, uh, assuming that uh, get the method that we just wrote works and the uh, player move one works, uh, we're going to simulate a game as described in part B. Um, now, at first, uh, we, 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 we should look at our instance variables and see what we have when we, we start this uh, method. So we're going to have the number of starting coins, number of max rounds, and we have a method for get player one move and get player two move. Okay, so let's write public void play game. Um, so we, we need some way of storing the number of coins that both players have. Uh, at first, I was a little confused because I assumed that would be an instance variable in, in this class. Um, however, it is not. So we need to store this as a local variable. So int uh, player one coins. Well, what, what value does that have? Well, it's the number of starting coins. Um, int player two coins is also starting coins. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, another piece of information we might like to know is what uh, round we're on. Um, so let's make it, um, you could just use the max rounds, uh, but I would prefer to not manipulate the instant, uh, mutate the instance variable if I'm uh, not going to be uh, uh, mutating the other one. So let's say int number of rounds left, and we will start it off at max rounds. Okay, so now we need to play the game. So what, what are the things that are going to happen in one round of the game? Well, let's put a while loop here, and we'll just leave that blank. We'll figure that out later. Um, what's going to happen when we play the game? Well, uh, we're going to get player one move, player one move, and we're going to use that to subtract from uh, the player one's coins. So well, we could, well, let's store this in a variable, m move one, m1, so sign get player one, one move. Int m2 is assigned get player two move. Okay. So now, how many coins does player one have left? Well, player one coins is going to be minus equal m1. Player two coins is going to be minus equal m2. Okay. Now we need to implement the rules. So let's check out the rules. Um, so if they spend the same number of uh, coins, player two gains one coin. Okay. So let's implement that. What do I mean by that? Well, if M one is equal to M two, then player, it's player one, uh, player two gains. So player, uh, uh, two coins plus equals one. Okay. All right, so off by one, do not spend the same numbers and the positive difference between the number of coins spent by the players two is one. Player two is awarded one coin. So if M1 uh, minus M2, is that correct? Let's look at some of the examples. So player one spends one, player two spends one. So off by one, player two gains one coin. So that would be correct, um, is equal to one player two coins plus equals one. Is that, that's correct, right? Yes. Okay. Um, now, this, the off by two rule, if the players do not spend the same number of coins and the positive difference between the coin number of coins spent by two players is two, player one is awarded two coins. So same thing. If M1 minus M2 is equal to two, player one coins plus equals one. Okay. All right, so this is how one round of the game works. And when do we need to stop? Well, it's specified down here. Uh, so the, the way they the game ends is whether either we've played through every single round, or if either uh, player's coins is less than three at the end of the round. So uh, we can say, well, uh, let's check uh, each player coin count. Player one coins is greater than three. And another thing that has to be true for us to continue is player two coins is greater than three. And the final thing that has to be true is number of rounds left is greater than zero. I th is it greater than equal to or uh, greater than? Let's see. So we s max rounds, does that mean we play five? So I think it's greater than equal to. So we start at five. No, it's, it's greater than. Um, not a big issue, but you can plug these numbers. It could be off by one. Um, okay, and we also have to update the number of rounds left inside the inside here. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's greater than zero because, uh, for example, if max rounds is one, we want to play one round. This starts off as one. We subtract one from it. Now it's zero. We want to stop. And zero is greater than zero is false. So um, number of rounds left minus minus. Just subtract it by one. We count down. When we get to zero, we stop. All right, so finally, we're at... After we've run this loop, we're at the end of the game. And what do we need to do now? Um, it says, if player one has more coins, you print player one wins. If player two has more coins, print player two wins. Otherwise, print tie game. So if player one coins is greater than player two coins, system.out.println player one wins. Uh, if, or let's put else if, else, let's just do if. If player two coins is less than, uh, is, sorry, greater than player one coins, system.out.println player two wins. If player one coins is equal to player two coins system.out.println tie game. And that's it. Okay, thank you very much.